What's up, everybody? Welcome to Shippy Crab News Break. I'm your host, Vince, and today I'm joined by the one and only Adam Berry. How you doing, Adam? I'm great. You know what? It feels yeah. like when the parents are away and <laughs> the kids are just left to like just look after themselves and we're in charge of the news and chaos will ensue. Chaos will absolutely ensue because... This is my first time in a while hosting news break again. It's good to be back in the driver's seat because Does it feel have... as comfy as it used to. Is the are well, the butt course. cheeks still uh, molded in there? Are they are they good to go? Oh yeah, this is. I mean, back in my element, you know. Cancelled Sunday funded challenge on me. I got nothing. I host the podcast once I'm back hosting something else. You know, I'm ready to go. You can also the podcast whenever you want, Vince. You did such a good job. You can have it anytime you want. Wonderful. Wonderful. But this isn't the podcast. This is news break where we break down all that sweet, sweet gaming news that we can get our claws on. In fact, today, as we're recording, apparently the PlayStation State of Play is going on right now. So we may have breaking news throughout. We'll see. We have seven news items to talk about today. A solid seven. Not much has happened, and yet a lot has happened, as it is yeah, with so, gaming yeah. news, unfortunately. But let's, let's start off with something more recent. Returnal has been officially reviewed. I should probably say the embargo has been lifted on reviews now. People have had their hands on it, reviewed it, apparently really loving that game. Right now, Returnal is sitting at an 86 on Metacritic. That's at the time of, you know, writing, I guess. Not really writing, yeah. but, you know, at the time. With a couple standout reviews from GameSpot, giving it a 9 out of 10 via Mike Epson, says, The mysterious story that teases you with progress and spurs to your journey forward. Scary cutscenes and spooky ambiance grab your attention and never let go. Tight performing and shooting meets challenging, randomized encounters that always feel fresh, even when they aren't. The innovative use of PS5 tech, including DualSense, haptics, and Tempest 3D sound, creates a visceral awareness of the world, which enhances ambient storytelling and gameplay. This is one I was very interested in. I mean, we've seen it. State of plays previously, you know, we could type that into a segue when I was talking about state of play earlier, but you know, here we are. A little rusty. Got to shake that rust off, you know? You'll get that. You'll get, get my it. You'll, great you'll... segues back. Yeah. I'll get there. But it it looked difficult when we've seen gameplay of it because it looked kind of like that mesh of like bullet hell and, you know, think on your feet kind of gameplay experience, which being a Souls player, yeah, I've played a few Souls games, I actually makes me more interested in the game, you know? Like, if it's got that bit of challenge, it's supposed to be a roguelike anyway, so it's got to have a little challenge to kind of keep you coming back for more. It, it's really interested in me, and hopefully I can get a PS5 and actually play this game. Maybe. Yeah. It, now, in full disclosure, this game doesn't tickle my pickle. Like, like, because I'm not a big roguelike sort of guy, and so I'm I'm never really going to fall into that category, and I haven't played the Souls games, and this is, like, the love child of, like, Hades, a Souls game, and Alien, yes. Is- was it Isolation? The, yeah, I think, yeah, Alien yeah, Isolation. Alien Isolation, if they all meshed and created this game, and then obviously add Resogun to it as well. Um, it looks fantastic. It's a beautiful looking game. And from what I've seen from the reviews and some of the videos, it looks and sounds incredible. Um, oh, yeah. And it's it's a great testament to the power of the PlayStation 5 as well, I think. It's the first game we've seen that's really showing kind of what the PlayStation 5 can do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that it's doing really well. Oh, yeah, I mean... PlayStation does really good with their games. Another standout review was from IGN via Michael Saltzman, who gave it an 8 out of 10, saying it's a roguelike, its roguelike runs are too long and it needs a way to 
I need the way to save in the middle of them. But Returnal's third person shooter action, clever storytelling, and atmosphere are excellent. Now, I've been seeing this going around a little bit online about you know how long runs generally take and the fact that you can only save at certain points and even putting your PS5 in rest mode has seemed to have caused people to lose their runs and you know lose yeah. hours of progress from what I've heard, which is very, very unfortunate because in a roguelike game, it's all about the runs. You need them quick, fast, in, out. Kind of like what Hades excels at, really. Like, runs can take you 30, 45 minutes, maybe. I don't know. I've never really played Hades. I want to. Mm-hmm. It looks great. But if your runs are too long, you're going to kind of... You want a good stopping point. You want a good resting point, you know? You can't be sitting there for hours on end, you know, trying to do this one thing over and over again. Again, I thought I was a Souls fan. It still kind of bothers me, even being a Souls fan, because I'm used to that. You yeah. just want to push past that kind of, like, point and... Get, get good runs in. Really yeah, to say that they're saying it, uh, an average run is ninety minutes. Yeah, that's so, way too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest, I think they'll look at this and they'll probably patch in. I, I imagine they'll patch in to add more saves or something to do with saves. I know some other roguelikes have added, mm-hmm. like had um, the amount of saves you could do in a run. So you can yeah. choose where you save, but you only have a limited number of those saves, which is a way of... Because I think with a roguelite, you, they don't want you to be saving it every 10 minutes every time you go into a battle and then just reloading it because that's not how those games are supposed to be played. No. So if they limited how many saves, you could have to save five in the run or whatever, then that might be a way of doing it. Or they'll just add... I know because it's kind of done with different worlds... I believe, or different yeah. rooms. I don't know. The, the, so maybe as soon as you complete one of them, you could save it. Like, because you'd think <laughs> like, there must be a way around it. There must be. I mean, it's something that should have definitely been looked at at first. Yeah. Because you don't really expect people to jump into this game and dedicate, what, 90 minutes a run, so three hours mm-hmm. for two runs. That's a bit much. People... Even if your run doesn't take that full 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Even with like Hades, a run, you know, lasts you anywhere, what I say, 30, 45 minutes roughly. Yeah. 10 minutes of that could be even like not making it. You know, you jump in, bounce in and out. But for a full run to be 90 minutes, you got to have somewhere in there where you can just pause, move on to something else. Because these type of games aren't meant to be played in generally one sitting, you know? Mm-hmm. It's more like I'm feeling this. I'm going to jump in for a little bit, do a couple runs, and bounce. You know, but, but having it at 90 minutes without any point to kind of like jump out if you want to is really weird. Hope that does. Hope that does get fixed. It is an easy fix, and yeah. it's it's a shame that they overlooked it. But these things happen now. What's important is what they do now, because th- you see this in quite a few reviews. Right. So. Maybe they're going to look at this and go, okay, yeah, you know what, we'll throw this in. That our bad, and no one will remember this. They'll just be like, okay, they fixed it. No problem, cool. Let's move on. It's not, yeah. it's not exactly cyberpunk, is it? You know, it's no. a, it's a, a detail they've overlooked that they shouldn't have overlooked, but they have. Hope, but if they leave it, then they deserve to get their scores go down a little bit, you know, because oh, yeah. it's an issue with the game. So. Yeah, I've seen Mitchell on Twitter talk about how he would have absolutely gave this game a nine, but the fact that their save points weren't in there really hindered the game. It's kind of unfortunate, but it still got a pretty good score. Better than our next topic, new Pokemon Snap. Reviews are up for it as well. And right now, sitting at an 80 on Metacritic, doing a little worse than Returnal, but I mean, obviously, it's Pokemon Snap. How many people are actually looking forward to this game? For $60, not many. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, generally, Pokemon spinoff games don't do so hot. But this one, I mean, when it was first announced, you saw on Twitter, everybody just getting, like, super nostalgic over it. I mean, I was a little interested in it because, you know, I had Pokemon Snap on N64. I enjoyed it. Doesn't make it a perfect game. 
and clearly the sequel has yet to live up to that most yeah it's a yeah. difficult one it's a difficult it one this like nostalgia shouldn't put up the price so much i know nintendo yeah. usually put their prices pretty high anyway especially mm-hmm. with pokemon there they uh, put that definitely behind a paywall but this is not a 60 dollar game no it's definitely not and the reviews kind of show some standouts being from Brian Shea over at Game Informer, who gave it an 8.5 out of 10, saying, New Pokemon Snap delivers all the thrills of the original game. That throwback spirit isn't the only part of the experience that will give you a good feeling of deja vu. That's neat. Didn't read the whole article. But it's Pokemon Snap. You get what you get. Yeah. As well as Rebecca Valentine over at IGN, giving it an 8 out of 10 saying new Pokemon Snap is a photography game with occasionally clunky progression, but which is eager to show off its delightful subjects and let them surprise you. I mean, it's Pokemon Snap. There's not really much to say about it. <laughs> not really. No. You take photos of Pokemon. You take photos of Pokemon, and sometimes you have to throw an apple at them to get them to do special things so you can take a special Like picture. all photographers do. Uh, like if oh, I'm yeah. taking a photo of someone, I throw an apple at them. Like, that's yeah. how you get the real good shots. It is. You know, you get that surprise, like, did you just throw an apple at me, shots? Yeah. You know? And then if you take it a second later, anger. <laughs> like, yeah. like, the real emotions. You generally get the, you know, more interesting emotions out of people yeah. that way. Yeah. You do. I know if someone threw an apple at me and then took a picture, I'd be a little confused and a bit angry. I think I'd just be shocked more than anything. I don't know yeah. how, like, like, it would take me a while to process what had just happened, I think. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, it would take probably more than a moment. Like, mm-hmm. Apple? Really? On to our next thing. I don't have a good segue for this because Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is getting a PS5 and Series X update. This is from Jordan Oleman over at IGN. After it leaked last month, Disney has officially confirmed that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will receive a free next-gen upgrade for PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S, which will arrive this summer. On StarWars.com, a small update explains that the upgrade will bring, quote, a number of technical improvements to the game to next-gen consoles. More details are coming soon, apparently. As part of the announcement, the game received a 70% discount on its standard and deluxe editions for PS4, Xbox One, Origin, and Steam. So you can buy it cheap now and get your free upgrade this summer if you need to. Now, I loved Jedi Fallen Order. That game was incredible. I've got every achievement in it. It's fantastic. This new update seems like they're you know, they got the good, a good idea. People probably missed out on this game. Now 70% off, so absolutely pick it up mm-hmm. if you're interested in it, whatever. Plus that free upgrade. I mean, just a note to all game developers. At this point, if you're looking to update your game for the new consoles, make it free. Yeah. Don't, Don't do like it. what Control do. Control yeah. did. And put it behind like a $30 paywall for a complete edition. When your base game is already on Game Pass for free that you can play on your Series X. Just upgrade that as well. Like, don't charge people for this. I mean, at most, we're probably going to get some updated textures and, you know, lighting effects and yada yada. But just make it free. It's not that hard. Yeah, it's not. But some of these companies struggle with it. I think this is a good move, obviously. I think a few people slept on this game. I think it came out in a pretty busy period, if I remember rightly. So I think a few people slept on it. I played it. Uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. But I think that's because it's it's got a lot of Souls influence yeah. in it. And I, that's not my style of game. I'd, uh, but it was badass when you're wielding a lightsaber and like just deflecting everything coming towards you and using the force yeah. a little bit. It was really cool. Um, I thought graphically it was pretty solid, voice acting mm-hmm. as well. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, you know, like 
because we're getting so many of these the games being upgraded and stuff like that for the next gen. Yeah. E- each time there's a new one, I kind of lose it a little bit more interest. I, like I, I I've played, I'm not I'm not really a guy that goes back and replays games um, mm. unless it's been a long time. Um, and it wasn't that long since I played this, so I probably won't play it straight away when it uh, updates. Um, I, the, I will probably play this whenever they're about to release the next one, if they do another one, just to refresh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's still it's great fan service though. It is. It's absolutely great fan service. Yeah. Did you finish the game, or did you just? No, I got. I think okay. I got very close, but okay. I've tried twice to finish this game. And both times has been, like I said, it's not the big parts of this game that are not my style of game. And the map is okay. appalling on, on like, that, oh, the yeah, game's yeah. great, but the map is terrible. That hollow map is ridiculous. It's awful. Uh, and the collectibles, like, he changed the color of my poncho. Like, like yeah. there's, that was awful. Oh, they're not great. Like, the, no. like, I would have rather had collectibles that had a bit of lore behind them, you know, or like oh, yeah. gave me some cool artifacts from that I'll know from the films, for example, like or right something on. related to that and a little bit of a story. But yeah, um, it was it was it, it was good, but I've never been able to finish it. I'll it try again, though. I mean, honestly, like I said, I love the game. I mean, I got every achievement in it, and that map is awful because one of the achievements in the game is to 100% complete every map on every world. And there was one specific planet that I was stuck at like 98% on for hours, just trying to figure out where the hell this missing section of a map was. And the hollow map was useless because every time I looked at it, Everything was, you know, all highlighted. I'd already been everywhere, except for this one part where you basically just had to jump up to a different, you know, section, and then that was it. It was a pain in the ass, and it made me furious. But I did it, and did I get anything out of it? Mm, not really. No. Not really. At least you got but, that. At least, at least got you got it. that achievement. I got that achievement. All thousand gamers score in it, and I love it. My second respawn game that I've gotten all thousand gamers score in. First being Titanfall Two. That's also a bitch of a achievement list too. Yeah, Beating time that. trials is awful. I get that achievements have to be, you know, there has to be a challenge behind them. But one mm-hmm. that I cannot stand, and this, I know this isn't the news, so I apologize. But yeah. is when they say where, for example, complete the game on all difficulties. Like, fuck off. Like, I understand a new game plus to an extent, but I'm not playing through the game four times, like, just to get an achievement. You can, not not a chance. Some of these achievements are ridiculous. Some of them are bad. Especially multiplayer achievements? Fuck off. Oh, no. If it's not multiplayer achievements, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying Absolutely stop putting those in there. Speaking of painful achievements, Halo Master Chief Collection has a ton of them. But we're not talking about Master Chief Collection. We're talking about Halo Infinite because their PC details have been announced. This is via GameSpot via Eddie McCunch. Pretty sure that's how you say his last name. Eddie, don't come after me if I'm wrong. Just kidding, you're probably not watching this anyway. I'm sorry, still. Halo Infinite PC details have been announced. Microsoft has shared some new details on PC, on the PC edition of Halo Infinite in a blog post regarding Microsoft's wider changes to PC gaming. The community, the company announced that Halo Infinite will support crossplay for multiplayer and cross progression. This announcement means Halo Infinite players can play together no matter what platform they're on whether that be Xbox One, Xbox Series X or S, or PC. As for cross-progression, yeah, cross-progression, this means whatever multiplayer customization items you unlock in the game 
on one platform will move with you to the other. Gameplay Progress 2 will move between systems. None of these announcements are a surprise, really, given that Microsoft has been pushing cross-play cross and cross-progression for years now. But it's a big, notable deal for Halo Infinite because the franchise hasn't released a new mainline ent entry on PC since Halo 2. All the mainline Halo games are now on PC through the Master Chief Collection as well, while Halo 5, Halo 5 Forge, is also on PC as a free download. But Halo Infinite will launch day and date on PC. Now again, this is just do this for everything kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Give us crossplay, give us cross progression. This it just makes sense. Like if I'm they even mentioned like Xbox One to the, the Xbox Series systems. If I'm upgrading, I want to carry my stuff to games I've already played. Yep. It doesn't I mean, I say, of course, it doesn't seem that hard because I'm not in game development. I don't know. I don't know whether this is super difficult or not, but still, the thing's like something that just should be a no-brainer at this point. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. And just let people play with who they want to play with and let them play on whatever console they want to play on. And like, I understand exclusives, but let it be part of the exclusive family, you know? Like, if, I, if I'm playing someone on on the xbox one and i want to move it to the xbox x or whatever let, let me you know exactly. Exactly. just be nice just be nice let people play games yeah. not this gatekeeping nonsense i know i hate it I hate every bit of it well halo's not coming out this year so continue yeah, we'll see we'll have see. they Still shown any any new footage of this game with i thought they were doing these monthly updates how are they going well yeah but you see this is part of the monthly update right i mean it has to be i'm just taking a wild guess at this point okay this is the first we've heard of them <laughs> in about three months but sure uh yeah but they've not done anything super big with it so it's not e3 yet just wait till e3 i'm sure we'll get something out of it you hope i uh, hope if, if halo is. is not at the microsoft conference at e3 halo's not coming out you know <laughs> it's gonna be you now it's got what else are there. they going to show? Not much. Halo Remastered. Halo Remastered, not again. again. Although Halo 3 Remastered, come on. Update that game. It looks like... Yeah. Well, I don't want to say it looks like garbage. It's okay. Some of the animations and some of the character models, not great, but... Yeah. Just give us Halo it's, Infinite. It version. looks it's almost fun. like the Halo Infinite trailer that we watched. <laughs> it's not that bad. Halo Infinite, I mean, not Halo 3. Halo no, 3 no, is no. But keeping with Microsoft and their relationship with PC, Microsoft? Oh, yep, here we go. Microsoft will give more of the revenue to PC developers. This is from Kotaku via Riley McLeod. Game developers on the, on the Microsoft, Microsoft, why can't I say Microsoft right now? Get it together. Game developers on the Microsoft Store will soon get a greater cut of the profits, Microsoft announced today. The change comes at a time with, when many developers and storefronts are rethinking the way profits are split. Quote, as part of our commitment to empower every, every PC game creator to achieve more, starting on August 1st, the developer's share of Microsoft Store PC game sales net revenue will increase to 88% from 70%. I almost thought that was a six. Yeah, can't read today either, or talk. Head of Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty, wrote on the Xbox blog, quote, a clear no strings attached revenue share means developers can bring more games to more players and find greater commercial access from doing so. The move, the move, the move is the latest in a bit of a C of a seed change for game revenues. In a survey released yesterday by the Game Developers Conference, only 3% of respondents thought that, once th that the once standard 30% take by a platform was justified. The Epic Game Store broke onto the scene by notably only taking 12% of the revenue. Over the last year, both Apple and Google have lessened their cuts for games, making under $1 million. 
Steam, we, meanwhile, has held more or less firm on its 30% take, with the, le- with the cut lessening the more money a game makes. A system that makes more money for larger, richer publishers while penalizing smaller indies. Now, again, this is definitely a, sum- a sign that Microsoft is willing to put more behind you know, PC games, PC game development by opening up that cut. Because that's an 18% increase from 70 to 88%. That's yes, big. great. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Microsoft, obviously, they started with the PC gaming. You know, they gotta they gotta show their love. They gotta they gotta respect yeah. their roots, really, haven't they? Uh, but it's really? great. It's great for developers. It will hopefully bring more games. So it's a win for for gamers. It is absolutely. Give me more games to play. Anytime, whatever platform, not just Xbox, PlayStation, maybe. Pick a little, uh, pick a little PC in there. Finally got a decent PC. I only have a Mac, so if it could make it Mac compatible. Oh, yeah, good luck with that, though. Apple's real, real stingy with that. They don't like their games on the the Mac. (laughs) They really don't. (laughs) Shifting our focus from Xbox to PlayStation, as we stated at the top of the show, the PlayStation State of Play is going on right now. And at that state of play, they have announced Among Us coming to PS4 and PS5 in 2021. This is from Polygon by Owen S. Good. Among Us launches later this year for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Sony said during its state of play streaming event Thursday, the PlayStation versions will get an exclusive Ratchet and Clank skin when the title launches. The social deduction game which first launched in 2018, but shot to newfound popularity with the quarantine gaming conditions of 2020, launched on Nintendo Switch in December and was announced for Xbox One and Xbox Series X the same month. Although those platforms likewise do not have a specific... Although those platforms likewise do not have a specific launch date. In addition to the skin, players on PS4 and PS5 will also get cross-platform online multiplayer support. Yes. More cross-platform support. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that yes, means cool. with every system. Yeah, hopefully. That would... Have you played Among Us? I have not. I have not played Neither have I, and I really, I really want to. Oh, I have yeah, never it's... played it. I've it's never about played it. I... Lying and deception. It should be right up your alley. <laughs> what? What is her? <laughs> They do. Don't be a but, sore loser, my friends. Like, oh no! But I think it would be a great game to for for us all to play, and then maybe bring some friends into it and uh, some of the community, and uh, that it could be a lot of fun to play. It could be. I mean, especially if this cross-platform online multiplayer support is a thing, we could all be sitting down with our preferred consoles, like we just talked about, and just playing together. That's what yeah, it's it's on a console. It works on an iPad. Mm-hmm. It also works on, I think, some Android uh, tablets as well. I don't know if it's on mobile. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Um, I think it is because I feel like... Yeah, I have it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I have an iPad. I just don't have anyone to play it with. So. Yeah, me too. It'd be a fun, yeah. uh, fun experiment. Yeah. You will just we'll accuse see. me every single time. <laughs> I know how it will go. Oh uh, yeah, you know how my uh, like to throw a wrench in the works every now and then. Yeah, just keep you on your toes. Definitely, of course. Keeping with PlayStation, Neil Druckmann confirms the Last of Us Three outline is written. "Quote: We'll see." This is from Liana Rupert over at Game Informer. When the first Last of Us game came out, it was an instant hit for the PlayStation 3 generation. When it was remastered for PlayStation 4, even more people fell in love with the tale of Joel and Ellie. While the release of The Last of Us Part 2 was more divisive, that hasn't stopped the sequel from winning an impressive amount of awards for its storytelling and design. Because of that, it it should be of no surprise that Neil Druckmann has confirmed that an outline for The Last of Us 3 
has been written with himself and Haley Gross at the helm. Naughty Dog creative director Neil Druckmann confirmed in a recent podcast episode for Script Apart that an outline for The Last of Us 3 exists thanks to a combined effort with Gross. But he was also very clear in stating that it is very much still just an outline at this stage. Quote, I don't know how, how much I want to reveal. Co writer Haley Gross and I did write an outline for a story that we're not making, but I hope one day can see the light of day that explores a little bit about what happens after this game, end quote. Being very much up in the air, he added, quote, we'll see. Adam, any interest in more Last of Us? Of course. Like, the, we've made no secret we love the last of us and the last of us part two um it's always a dubious thing it doesn't need any more but i feel like and you have to tread lightly obviously because oh yeah I don't want to go into any sort of spoilers whatsoever but the mm. the mood of the second one overall i feel like if they take that mood in an, and end it in an opposite direction in the third, that could be a really good arc. Oh, yeah. Um, and something that you wouldn't expect, really, from this, from the, mm-hmm. from Neil and the team over, over Naughty Dog. So, um, Very true. I'm always, listen, whatever they write is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Like, That's they're true. just incredible storytellers over there. Like, you see it with pretty much every game they release. So, um, yeah, I'll wait happily, patiently for the next five, six, seven, eight years waiting for this game to be made. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'll look forward to playing it um, probably the back end of the uh, PS5 and then it can get remade for the PS6. Like, uh, sure. standard. Because I mean, obviously they didn't mention the article, but there has been that whole thing flying around about remastering mm-hmm. Or remaking, not even remastering, yeah. the Last of Us for the first Last of Us for PS5, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, it does not. Need but it. this does kind of fit in with that narrative of Sony is wanting to keep pushing these AAA, you know, Naughty Dog developed games, and I feel like, yeah, we're gonna see a Last of Us three. Will it be anytime soon? No. Absolutely not. Not anywhere near. No. I mean, they take outline... a long time to make. Oh, absolutely. Plus an outline is literally just story beats you want to hit. You know, it's mm-hmm. not even full-fledged ideas. It's just like this is kind of... The beginning, the middle, and an end. That's all you've yeah. got and nothing in between. Absolutely nothing. So if this does happen, you're probably looking uh, I'd hate to say 2030, but maybe. Something around there, probably. Yeah. 20, 28, maybe. Roughly. Yeah, I mean, it took something like, to make. Yeah. How long was it between Last of Us and then Part 2? Seven or eight years, something like that, I think. Roughly, yeah. I think it That's came also, out 2012, yeah. maybe, The Last of Us? Which one, what is The Last of Us? I don't need to look this up now. I'm curious myself. Last of Us. Nope, not remastered. Release date. There we are. The Last of Us release date was June 14th, 2013. 2013, okay. Yeah. So, and it came out in 2020? It was part two, was it? Part two was... Last yeah, year, yeah. June 19th, so, 2020. So seven years. Seven years. So 2028 could be... <laughs> could well, be. 2027. 2027, 2028. Well, we, we, shall, uh, we shall see. Um, but you, you imagine they'll be well, they're working on, didn't they say they're working on a new IP? And there's rumors that they're working on a new Uncharted game as well. Yeah, those were kind of the rumors floating around. I'd like to see a new IP from them. Oh, absolutely. It's been a while since we've seen a new AAA like, IP from Naughty Dog, and they've gone basically on Uncharted, Last of Us, Uncharted, Last of you know, back and forth. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a new story from them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they are great at what they do. No doubt about yeah. it. I mean, The Last of Us Part 2, 
solidified that in many ways. I would hope we get something new and different out of them. I mean, not like super different. I don't want them going off and making, you know, a MMO or something wild like that, you know? It'll still be a single player, triple A story driven game, surely. But what genre would you like them to dip their toe into? Oh, man. Because they've done uh, adventure, I guess, with obviously uh, Uncharted, and they've done horror. I guess horror action in horror the action, uh, yeah. yeah action horror over the Last of Us. Mm. Like, what would you what would you like to see them do? So, for some reason, what popped into my head now I have two really interesting ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, I'm going to go with the super outlandish one. I would like a kind of noir cyberpunkish story where you kind of because they generally theme their um games especially with the last of us and last of us part two around these kind of dark ideals you know Mm -hmm. i think a game probably revolving around the morality of bio enhancements or that kind of like cyberpunkish technological style would kind of fit with them that's a really um, Secondly, a mystery style game. Like kind of I don't even want to say like detective work or that's, whatever. You know like what? That that's game. what yeah. I was gonna suggest. Mm-hmm. Like a a big yeah. expansive like kind of like detective maybe maybe from different perspectives. Oh yeah. Uh, a bit like Heavy Rain style, you know, where it's, it's an ongoing, where the stories overlap and stuff like this, but it's yeah. solving a mystery. Maybe it's a, a murder. Maybe it's, I don't know, with with Naughty Dog, it could be anything. But I'd like I to really see them do be. that. I like to see them because you can get the action beats, you can get the suspenseful beats. But yeah, I also like the cyber the cyberpunk style idea. Or even them going doing something that's more period-based. You know, like oh, yeah. going a bit further back, like I'd like to see them tackle. Like, I know we spoke about Detective, but you look at something like L.A. Noir, what Rockstar oh, yeah. did, and that game was okay, um, yeah. but could have been a lot better. And I think Naughty Dog could have really fleshed out that period of time really well and done oh, yeah, a little bit sure. more of the detective side of it. Obviously, a bit less open world and a bit more area based. Or maybe they do go open world, but I don't think that suits maybe. them. No, because they definitely tried it with um, Lost Legacy, right? And it yeah. kind of a mixed bag of some people enjoyed it, some people didn't. I mean, I for one didn't really kind of care. Lost Legacy is probably the most forgettable for me, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they don't go that route. I would hope. Yeah. They're very good at like narrowing a focus down to, you know, more of a linear style thing. Even though The Last of Us Part Two kind of had some open world elements to it, a little bit, for the yeah, most part, a little yeah. bit. I, I tell you what, you could see them doing really well purely because it ties in so much with what they did with Uncharted. But they'd have to make a conscious effort to make it different. Would be a pirate game. Yeah, I could see they'd that. be really, they'd be really good at that. But that's basically Uncharted. Basically, <laughs> like, but you give, yeah. but we, but with sword fighting and stuff like that mm. would be really good um oh yeah because they they yeah. make really good vistas like really Isn't good it? level design so um it's like being a stunningly beautiful game and they got really good with their like combat animation and gameplay mm-hmm. especially there in the last yeah. part two so I, yeah so i can definitely see them working that in with like sword fights like these big moments kind of like that working out really well for them yeah, because I think a lot of games, I know we're going way off a tangent and we've got other stuff to go through, but uh, they, I think a lot of games take the action of killing somebody mm. as granted, you just slash them and they're dead. And yeah. I think Naughty Dog made it very visceral when you had to kill somebody, like especially when it was close quarters, not just with the gun and stuff like that. Especially in The Last of Us, in Uncharted, you just mowed people down continuously. But... Um, in the last of us like it was visceral it was guttural it was like it's you or me right like, and i'm gonna like and you i would love to see them do that in a 
less horror environment, but it makes it a bit mm-hmm. with a bit more realism behind it, where there's an actual, yeah. you are taking somebody's life. Like, th- yeah. there's a weight to that, that, you know? Like, I, but they probably won't. They'll probably just put hundreds of skeletons or something on an island and let you slash it out, because, <laughs> like... <laughs> But anyway, it'll be fun. Like, I know I'd still love it, and I'd love it, and I probably it'll probably get a ten out of ten. But um, for sure, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Now you said you had a surprise up your sleeve for me. I do because while the parents are away, like while Terry is not with us today, um, I thought because we don't have Sunday Fun Day Challenge anymore um, at the moment because we're getting ready for E three. And you've been such a great host of the Sunday Funday Challenges. So it's been a while where yeah. you got to be put through the ringer on very the true. Sunday Funday Challenge. So I'm bringing back a very small Sunday Funday Challenge just for you, Vince. Uh, oh, yes. Like the good old days of where it began uh, on our <laughs> news breaks together. I have a Sunday Funday Challenge. And I should have really done a gaming one, seeing as it was game, mm. it's the gaming news channel. But it's not. It's movies. Oh, yeah, uh, movies. movies. So, sticking with your favorite uh, subject of money, uh, mm. like we're going to do the top 10 worldwide grossing films of all times. Worldwide grossing films of all times. Now, time. these have not been altered for inflation. Mm. So, these not are as the, the money they made is the money they made. All right. So I can tell you, I will give you a little bit of a ballpark here because obviously it's a wide berth. I just want to double check. I believe the oldest film on this list is 1997. 97, wow. Okay. I believe, yeah, 1997 is the oldest film on this list. Interesting. Interesting. So you have your normal rules. You have three lives. Mm-hmm. If you get it and you get the position... Right. You get a life back. You get two lives back if you can tell me the global box office to the nearest cool. million. To the nearest million. Yeah. Well, we go with the obvious one. We go with number one. We go mm-hmm. Avatar. What the hell is that up to now? Like almost three billion or something? Mm, no, I don't think it's over one billion yet. I think it's like 1.7 billion. Okay, so you're going Avatar number one, one point seven billion. Yep. Now yeah, I think Avatar part. has retaken number one, but this list hasn't been updated. So I will give you Avatar oh, yeah. at number one. Okay. I think it overtook it because they re-released it recently. Um, okay. But uh, so I will on. give you, I will give you the extra life. So you're up to four, but mm-hmm. it did two point eight billion dollars. Two point eight, yeah. Uh, insanity. That's what I was going between. I was like, I know it's billion, first of all, but did it break that two billion mark? No. Was like ninety eight percent sure it did, but then uh, it got to me. It got to me. Oh, you got it. You got it. Yeah. There you go. So that's one down. Where are you going next? Uh, that would make number two in game. And. Let's throw 2.5 billion. So you have Endgame at number two with 2.5. It is Endgame at number two with 2.7 billion. Seven. So close. Yeah. I think Avatar was one million behind Hmm. Endgame. And it did a re-release to push it back to number one. Of course. Cameron can stand to be in number two. No. Same. Okay, so you've got one and two. You've got the easy ones out yeah, the way. One, easy ones are done. Where do we go from here? Uh, do we stick with Marvel? Do we go even more far-fetched? What do we do? What do we do? Well, I know right off hand, we're dealing with billions, obviously. One of the highest grossing Marvel movies was Black Panther. And it did pull over a billion. I'm going to throw Black Panther number five at 1.2 billion. Close for the Close. for the amount. Uh, Black Panther is number 10 oh, and yeah. it is at 1.3 billion. 
One point three. Wow. Okay. There you go. You've got 1. ten, 3. two, and one. Ten, two, and one. I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Well, the old movie I'm thinking on this list. I'm going to take a shot at it immediately. Okay. Because for a while, this was probably one of the highest grossing films of all time. And I'm pretty sure, I don't remember the exact year, but I think it was 97. Maybe. Okay. I'm going Titanic. Okay. I'm putting that at number six. Let's say number six. With number 10 was 1.3. Hmm. 1.6 billion. So you're saying Titanic at number six with 1.6 billion. Yeah. Vince, Titanic is number three with three. 2.1 billion. That's a, uh, see, that was my thought. I knew it was up there for the longest time, but I didn't know how it, if it held split, the title it. for 12 years as the yeah, highest yeah, yeah. grossing film. All right, so we've got one, two, three, and 10. So you now have four through nine to get through. Okay. Oh, where do we go from here? What is this is where my knowledge goes. Because that was the 97 one, right? That was the mm-hmm. oldest movie on the list. Uh gotta start thinking more recent. Like what what could be on this list? It can't all be Marvel. No, I will tell you. Yeah. Like, because I don't want it to be deep. Mm. A 90 minute episode. Uh, uh, two. You have three more Marvel films on this list. Three more Marvel films. Mm-hmm. Well, now I want to throw out Infinity War because I know that did really big and then Endgame hit and it was hype. So I'm going to throw Infinity War at number eight with. Two billion. Why not just two billion? Okay. Mm-hmm. Avengers Infinity War is at number five. The, yeah, I'm with two billion. Season. With two billion, okay. I'll take one of them. Well, 2.048. Okay. So we're counting okay. that as two billion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, So, but that's number five. So you have, just to recap, you have Avatar at number one mm-hmm. uh, with... 2.8 billion. Yeah. You have Avengers Endgame at number two with 2.7. You have Titanic at number three with 2.1. You don't have number four. Number five is Avengers Infinity War with 2 billion. You don't have six. You don't have seven. You don't have eight. You don't have nine. And then number 10, Black Panther with 1.3. 1.3. You have two mm. more Marvel films left. Two more Marvel films. Now, a lot of Marvel films, either a little bit before Infinity War or after, with I assume the exception of Ant Man and the Wasp, hit that billion mark. And one of those I think was Captain Marvel, but I'm not 100% sure. And I want to say OG Avengers was up there, but I Part of me wants to say it didn't beat Black Panther. But I'm also not sure because I've not been sure with the many of these numbers. So you know what? I'm throwing OG Avengers on there. Marvel's The Avengers. I think it's what it's called over there. At hmm, 1.5 billion. Just guess the number. I didn't guess the position. Let's go number nine. Number nine. Marvel's The Avengers is at number seven, seven wow. with 1.5 billion. <laughs> You're nailing the I'll billions. Take it. Nailing the billions. So we've got. So we're still looking one, for two. nine, eight, six, and four. Nine, eight, six, and four. And you have four lives. Four one lives. Oh. Marvel film. One more Marvel film. What is that going to be? That's hard because I don't think Age of Ultron did that well. Although it might have being the second Avengers film. 
Iron Man 3. I'm going for it. It's probably not on the list. <laughs> because okay. for one, it's the highest grossing Iron Man movie. It was immediately after Avengers. It, it no, it, I know it broke a billion. So I'm pretty sure Black Panther probably went over it. But yeah, I'm sticking with it. Iron Man 3 at number 9 with 1.4 billion. Why not? You have lost your first yeah, I life. So. I thought so. That is not on our list. Not on the list. Not on the list. Failed. I haven't. Iron Man, you let me down again. Wait until we start. You still have three lives left, though. Three lives left and what? Four more to go? Yeah, four more to go. Still one Marvel film. One Marvel film. What other studios are on this list? Maybe I can start thinking about those. Not telling you. Assume they're DC. Not telling you. Okay. Not even like Disney or... Okay, I will tell you that there are no other superhero films on this list apart from the Marvel one. No superhero movies on the list. And no animated films. No animated films. Hmm. Just for shits and giggles. Because why not? Star Wars Episode 7. The Force Awakens. At still have eight and nine left, right? Mm. Uh, yes, you do. Number eight with one point four billion. Why not? Ooh. Another life gone. Star oh, Wars The Force least. Awakens is number four on this number list. Number four, okay. With a global box office of two billion. Wow. Okay. okay. So you have one, two, three, four, five. You don't have six. You have seven. You don't have eight, and you don't have nine. And you have so six, eight, and nine is what I'm working with. I'm going to assume... give you a little bit of help. Yeah. There are no other Star Wars films on this list. Yeah, I didn't think so. Just wanted to. So I think it it. peaked at episode seven and then everything else was what it was. Oh man. This is where it gets tricky because I have one more Marvel film left. I've already done original Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame. Black Panther, obviously. Don't want to say Captain Marvel's on there, but it could be. It very well could be. Because I know it broke a billion. I don't know if it did enough to make the highest grossing films of all time, you know? Although it might have. You have to take. You know what? I've got what? Three lives left? You've got three lives left and three more to guess. Shot in the dark. Captain Marvel, number nine, 1.4 billion. Captain Marvel, number nine, 1.4 billion. You're down to two lives, my friend. Yeah, I thought so. Man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Age of Ultron on this list, isn't it? It's gonna be Age A lot of, of Marvel films. films. A lot of Marvel films. How many actually broke that top spot? Well, we have, what, four on the list? Or was it... Mm-hmm. You need to get number nine, number eight, and number six. Nine, eight, and six. Mm-hmm. What are those other two movies that aren't Marvel? Yeah, three different films. I'll give you a clue. Okay. All of them are from franchises. All of them from franchises. Mm-hmm. Ah, something just hit. Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. Gotta if I know which one. Gotta I know which one. The third one. At World's End? Is that right? At World's World's End. End. Okay. That is the third one. Number 
six I have open? Yeah. Let's you do have number six, six open. Uh, what was four? I can tell you that number five did two billion. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. seven did 1.5 billion. It did 1.8 yeah. billion. 1.8 billion. Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean free at World's End at number six. Six, yeah. You're down to one life. Wow. Okay. Oh. Oh. I thought Pirates of the Caribbean was on the list. I could be wrong. You are wrong. I am wrong. Pirates of the, Car Pirates of the Caribbean is not on this list. Okay. None of them are on the list. Okay. Mm. That doesn't leave much. Yeah. Franchises. I will give you a hint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this might be a big hint. So, uh, all three of these films came out in 2015. They all came out in the same year. Yeah. I would say that helps with the Marvel one, but it doesn't. Oh, shit, it is Age of Ultron, isn't it? Wasn't that 2015? <laughs> now I'm rethinking it. Uh, what well, it was 2015. Do I remember 2015? Not really. I don't remember 2020. Ooh. Yeah, me either. Fuck it. Age of Ultron. I'm putting it low. I'm putting it number nine. And okay. We'll, we'll keep going with 1.4 billion. Because Black Panther's 1.3. So Avengers Age of Ultron, number nine at 1.4 billion. Yeah. Then you've got a full house. Full it's house. Age of Ultron at number nine with 1.4 billion. So wow. you get two lives back. Two lives back. All right. So we're You're back up to three, three. lives. Oh, man. With two films to guess. So it's what? Number six and number eight, right? Uh, number six eight. eight. Yes. Six and eight. Mm -hmm. Franchises came out in 2015. Not animated film. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Franchises 2015. What the hell came out in 2015? Oh, that's a hard one. Any more hints? You got any more hints? Is it a popular franchise? Yeah. Or are they both from the same franchise? No, different franchises. Different franchises. Okay. One of the franchises has been around a lot longer than the other. But they're okay. both. Have a fair few of them in there. Thing. More movies than Marvel. No. No. Okay. Franchises have been around longer. Oh man. Skyfall. I don't know okay, if that was 2015. Yeah. But Skyfall is a good one. I know it did. Really well. No, it did really well. Uh, let's throw that number eight with one point four, I guess. No, seven was one point five. Um, yeah, well, let's say one. Seven was, yeah, one point five. Yeah, let's go with another one point five. Why not? So what's this for? Skyfall at number eight. Skyfall number eight. With 1.5. You are back down to two lives. Oh, damn. Skyfall, Skyfall came out in 2012. Oh, man. It's what probably Spectre, Spectre that Spectre came out. Did. Oh, no, Quantum of Solace. Oh, no, that was before that one. It must have been Spectre yeah, around then. Maybe 2016 was Spectre. I'm not sure, but no. I don't remember when it came out. So yeah, lucky. Good idea though, really going good. for Bond. Bond yeah. usually, yeah. I'm surprised Bond isn't on the list. Me too. I know people love Skyfall. I know it did pretty well. You know, it was already on one of the Sunday Funny Challenges. I should have known how much it made. Clearly, I don't. There's remember. been a lot of numbers on those. <laughs> There's been a lot. Okay, oh, so you've got two lives left. Two lives left. films left to get. Two films left. With two Both from franchises. Mm -hmm. 
both are still releasing films from those franchises recently as well. Recently. Or are scheduled to. Um, well, man. The I only mean, other big franchise. One of the franchises like started in the 90s. In the 90s? I think so. Let me double check. Is it a film franchise or is it franchise based off of a property? No, they're both film franchises. Okay. But are they adaptations? Yeah. So one of them started in the 90s. Okay. And it's still still going. And the other one started in the noughties. And is the noughties? In the noughties. In my mind, Ben also goes big franchises. Harry Potter, right? And that's a big one. Definitely Hallows Part 2, apparently. Final film usually makes big money, right? People are very excited. Ooh, man. I have two lives. I have two guesses that might mm-hmm. be solid. Maybe. We'll see. But yeah, let's just throw Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows Part 2 at Fellow Avalo 6 and 8. Mm-hmm. Let's throw it number 8. Let's say 1.5 billion. I could be wrong. One life left, huh? One life left. left. There is no Harry Potter on no this Harry list. Potter on the list. All right. I'm going to have to go. These are both American franchises. Both American franchises. Mm-hmm. American film franchise. Yep. Still have things going on. Oh, plan. One started in the 90s, one started in the Ooh. in the aughts. Hmm. Man. I'm kind of sitting at nothing. <laughs> I want to help you, but at the same time, I can't give. Um, no other hints you can give. One For franchise started life. in 1993. 93 does not help. <laughs> um, hmm. No, that was 80s. It has one of the most iconic theme tunes of all time. Hmm. Iconic theme tunes. A very famous theme tune. See, now I'm thinking Indiana Jones, but Indiana Jones has not that definitely started. If it's in the not 80s. Indiana Jones. Yeah, I didn't think it was. It Very iconic theme tune. See, when I think that, my mind obviously goes, you know, Star Wars. No, the Star Wars on the list. Uh, Indiana Jones. No Indiana Jones. Bond. No Bond. No superheroes. So guess. there's no Superman or anything like that. Mm. I can give you another hint. Yeah. Okay. So, how do I word this without giving it away? In the early films and the latest film, Mm -hmm. there is a character who is played by an actor who has appeared in a Marvel film as the villain. Hmm. Okay. As the villain? Hmm. Within the last... Five years. In the last five years. See, I've got it. Now just which movie is it? Talk, talk us through it, because it's not... Like, yeah. cause, Cause what, what the part? franchise is Jurassic Park. I know okay. that for sure. 2015, is it really... What is that movie called? Crap. It's not Fallen Kingdom. That was the latest one. Not Lost World, that was two. Obviously not Jurassic Park 3, that movie was an atrocity. Uh, Jurassic World, right? That was the fourth one? Was that not twenty? That was one of them. Mm. No, because that wasn't 2015. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm going Jurassic World number... I mean, it's got to be eight, right? At 1.4 billion. 
Jurassic World. No, it wasn't. Yeah. You were Don't so tell me it's close. number six. It was Jurassic Park 3. With... No, really? I'm joking. I'm joking. It's Jurassic yeah. World, but it's at number six. That's insane. Uh, with 1.6 billion. Fair enough. So we're I'll down to Pratt. one life, one, one film. Life. One film. Hmm. One life, one film. This one, this franchise. Now, talk through this. Lots. Don't just blurt it out. Yeah. Talk through it. My mind obviously goes Lord of the Rings. Because no, I know. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Those are just won a bunch of awards and probably sold a bunch. This film came out in 2015, remember? The Hobbits definitely didn't yeah. make it into that list. No. Definitely not. Shame. I'm just going to focus on making at least one of those movies. It would have been great. But no. 2015. When was the first film in the franchise released? What year that was, would that have been? <laughs> That's where I'm thinking. That's where I'm kind of wrapping my head around. If I can at least get the franchise, I can probably nail down the movie. But I don't know. That's the way it was with Jurassic Park. If I can get Jurassic Park, I can work through the movies. 2001. 2001. Wow. Okay. That does not help at all. And it was released in 2015. And the latest film was released in two. There was so there was 2001, 2003, 2006, 2009, 2011, 2013, 2015, 2017, and there'll be one in 2021. And there's also a spin off in 2019. It's Fast and the Furious. Uh, which fucking movie was 2015, though? Shit. Uh, if I would have been paying attention, I would have known exactly which one it was. <laughs> just yeah. them all in order. That's why yeah. I said them quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. So we had Fast and Furious, Two Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, Fast and the Furious, Fast Five, whatever the hell Fast Six was called, Furious Seven, Fate of the Furious, and Hobbs and Shaw recently. Mm-hmm. I can tell you it's not Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> yeah, that was 2019. Decent movie. I ain't gonna lie. Shit. Which one was it? People love Fast Five. But I, don't... I can tell you that it does star Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's at least five through eight right there. Just say it. Like, just eight. narrowing down. Th- th- that helped yeah. you a little bit. It does star Dwayne The Rock Johnson. My mind wants to say five. I keep thinking five, but I really don't know if that's right. We jumped from 2015 to 2017. That's all I remember. There was a two year gap. Let me. I help don't you remember a what the hell bit. six was called. Yeah. So the fourth film, which was Fast and the Furious, or Fast and Furious, sorry, that came out in 2009. So that would mean for Fast Five to come out in 2015, there'd have to be a six year gap. Right. So. I don't think, I didn't think eight was that long ago. It could be seven. Yeah, because that was Paul Walker's last one, wasn't it? I think I'm going with seven. I think I'm going with Furious Seven. At our number eight. You're spot. looking that in? That tone makes me not want to. <laughs> you looking at it? See, the problem is I don't remember what six was called either, and I don't remember any of the movies at all. Uh, six was called Fast and Furious Six. That's right, because they keep fucking the name up. Mm. That would have been a six year gap from. Four to five, the five was recent to be 15. You can't be, oh man. I'm racking my brain on this one. I'm trying to see if 
Six or seven. Six or seven. Gonna have to take an answer. Yeah. I think seven was Paul Walker's death, right? I feel like people went in droves to see that movie because of that reason. So fuck it. I'm going to say seven. Why not? So you're going for the Furious Seven. I'm going for Furious Seven. I don't At know number why. eight. At number eight. And what box office do you think for this? One point three. Just a little bit more than Black Panther. Why not? Just number nine did one point four. Number nine did one point four. This is number eight. Yeah, and number seven did one point five. No, one another one another one point five. Forgot we were going for eight. Okay. What yeah. I can tell you is the global box office for this film was 1.5 billion. Oh, that's good. Serious things in there. You have to get the film right to get it, though. Had to get the film right to get it. Uh... So, Fast and Furious 5 came out in 2011. Oh, shit. Was it 8? No, it was The fate right. of the Furious came out in 2017. Okay. Fast and Furious 6 came out in 2013. Furious 7 came out in 2015. You have completed the Sunday Fun Day Challenge, which is on a Friday. Like, Vince, you are still undefeated. Still undefeated. Barely. Well done. Some great deduction there. Oh, yeah. I think I saved you a few times. Um, Probably. you know what? Like, like, Teamwork makes the dream work. It sure does. Where uh, would we be? Well done. Without teamwork. Did you know they're doing a Hobbs and Shaw sequel? That yeah, no surprise there. And they're doing an untitled female-led film of the Fast and the Furious, apparently. Apparently, yeah, that's supposed to be a thing. Yeah. Just on the Wikipedia, that's how I got the dates. Okay, that makes sense. And they're doing a tenth film. Yeah. They've already announced that they're doing a, a tenth one. Yeah. So you've got F9 coming yeah. out in 2021, and then there's untitled tenth film. I think they were doing ten, weren't they? So, Yeah. Oh Insane. God. Way too many of those films. Yeah. You know what? Not bad films. Hey, well, you did really well. And Vince... I'll take it. Like, great hosting today as well. Of course. Um, I'll leave it for you to take us out. Of course. If you have enjoyed Shifty Crab News Break slash Sunday Funday Challenge, I guess, then absolutely head over to youtube.com slash what are we, just Shifty Crab? Yeah. I think that's our YouTube channel name. Cool. Yeah. Head on over to youtube.com slash Shifty Crab where we have our Shifty Crab podcast posted every Wednesday for your viewing enjoyment as well as over on podcast services around the globe because yeah we do podcasts here we do podcasts both visual and audio so if you don't want to look at us go listen to us your favorite podcast service yeah why not it's a weird one this week weird yeah a weird one bit of a weird one we go into some really weird places with it but you know As what? Always. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it fun. Probably one of our best podcasts we've done. Oh, I loved it. it. I loved it. Oh, me too. It was I great. sick afterwards, but I loved it. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. Always a good time. Always a good time. Always a good time. And as always, we have our news breaks every Friday. Usually Terry's here to us, but good make today. It's a shame. And because you couldn't make it today, we just had a little fun. We had a little fun. A bit of fun. Gone but not, but not forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. He will hopefully be here next week. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining me, Adam, on this Shifty Crab news break. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. Oh, I'll see you like you're still in the thing again. I got it back. You got it back. 
You got to say it, ladies and gentlemen. Will it be the first time? Will it be the last time? Probably Which the last. Keep watching and find out. Probably the last. Taking it back. Promise you. But until next time, stay shifty. <laughs>